Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. I'm your host, Jesse Showalter, and it is, is it Wednesday already? It sure is. And we got people jumping in the chat like Misty and Dan and Manuela and Annie, Sam Peterson, Cody Bear moderating. It's going to be a fabulous day. We had a little bit of a mix up yesterday here on the XD Daily Creative Challenge, but the replay is available for yesterday's space themed big hero animation banner challenge. And today we're going to be diving in and doing a bunch more stuff. Hey, tell me, what is your favorite early morning drink on a Wednesday? Is it a coffee? Is it a tea? Is it an energy drink? Is it just good old water, which we should all probably be drinking a little bit more of this year in 2022? Uh, it is going to be a ton of fun today. Let's jump over and take a look at the XD Daily Creative Challenge. You can find more about it at bns.net slash challenge slash XD. Hit that big blue button and join the challenge. You scroll down and you can see uh, yesterday's challenge as well as today's challenge. Get your starting file, watch the video, scroll all the way down and get in that Discord community by hitting join us. That'll join you with 60,000 plus other creatives here on uh, the Adobe XD Discord server. And this is where you're going to find people to chat with and submit your work and get feedback and then even get your work featured and reviewed at the end of these challenge streams. It's going to be a ton of fun. Monica says she's digging the water to drink. Some people doing tea. Some people like coffee. I'm a big coffee. And then I have a little nootropic drink to get my day kicking. Uh, with that being said, talking about kicking things into gear, let's jump over to our starting file for the day. Uh, this is challenge number two. And we have a little challenge prompt here. It says design a prototype, a robot vacuum control app. It allows users to turn on their RoboVac, set the timers, maybe clean stuff, but we really want to use some fun features in XD to really bring this thing to life, like auto animate, Lottie animations, maybe even some 3D. I don't actually think we're doing sound in this one, but you can add sounds and it would be a lot of fun. All you gotta do is find a little robot vacuum sound or robot sounds. We've got some inspiration, some resources, and a starting artboard that has some really subtle, it may be hard for you to see on your screen uh, at home, but we have some nice kind of glow effect going on in the background, kind of modern, kind of cool. And we have a robot vacuum cleaner um, image. And I threw some assets at the top to kind of make this the start of an actual usable interface. Like maybe we've clicked into our vacuum, we've tapped into it, and this is showing our vacuum. We're gonna build some stuff, we're gonna have some fun. I also, on my desktop, I have a couple other things. I got some other vacuum images just in case I wanna use them. Um, and so you can go out and find some of those. And I just grabbed a generic floor plan uh, by doing a quick internet search. I just searched floor plan and that's what I got. So we might use that a little bit later. Let's add some typography to this file, shall we? To our, to our project. I'm gonna hit T for typography and I'm gonna add something in there. I think my typography is coming out the color of white. So let's just go pure black for now. And let's see if we can't at least see our typography. That would be nice. That's good. Okay. So now we can see it. And this is this typography that I have. The size of it can get bumped up. And we can use the um, the actual panel on the right-hand side if we want to. Or because this is auto-fit text, we can just drag the bottom and increase the size of this text. Let's do something like 36. And I'm just going to center it right there and pump it up. Let's call this one, um, we'll call this Robo vac like this or actually you know what we should probably do let's go this is like the living room all right and uh good we have our living room there let's bump this down a little bit maybe something like 32 and then we'll move up and i'm going to do a little bit of math inside my typography panel i'm just going to divide this by two and now we're doing uh, kind of like a base typography down at 16. This is, you could imagine kind of working this off of the eight point pixel grid. So we're doing some typographic scale. We're not gonna get super into that today, but you could look up typographic scale online. You'll find some details about it, maybe in a video, a video of me on YouTube where I talk about that if you need to learn more. So uh, another good way to create some contrast and add some dynamics to your text is to drop them down one to two weights. So not only size, but weight as well. And then let's even, let's even bring some of the color down. We'll pick kind of a light gray. Good. And I'm going to line those two things up just vertically like so and make sure they're at the center. And let's put a RoboVac 
uh, one. All right, so this is maybe we have multiple. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice if we had multiple Robovacs? We'll put that, maybe we'll put that all the way at the top. Um, and we'll, may, yeah, let's go with that. Okay, we're just kind of feeling things out for now. And what I'd really like to do next is, that's, I don't like the placement of this, so let's actually bring that down. That's much better, I think. Okay. And maybe we'll even play with putting this in the center. Yeah, we'll do that for now. All right, let's create a segment to control for on off. You could do, you could turn your vacuum on lots of different ways. I'm thinking about creating a segment to control that shows off on or sleeping or, or charging. And then the other option would be like on or, or cleaning. But I also want to integrate some Lottie kind of like animations into it. So let's build a nice, big, chunky, segmented control. To do that, I'm going to hit R for rectangle. And I'm going to drag out a nice sized rectangle that fills up the majority of the bottom of my screen. Center, align the whole thing. And uh, I tell you what, let's make this jet black. I don't usually use jet black. I usually use off black. But let's just go for it so you really pick it up on screen today. But I encourage you at home. Just knock it back a little bit from that jet black. Cornell says hello. Hello to Chris Olson. And we got Misty and Dan jumping in. All right, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so this is the start of our segmenting control. We'll call this our, our BG to our segmenting control. I'm just going to Command C, Command V, and make another one. I'm going to make this one white. And then you guess it. I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit. And I'm really just looking for a nice distance inside. Uh, it's about, what is that, five pixels? Uh, five pixels of distance from the edge there. Now we're at six. Let's give it the same distance on the left-hand edge. And now we have ourselves the start to a control. All right, so that we're doing something or keeping things similar, I'm gonna come up here and grab my text and I'm going to paste it right here. And let's just bring it down. We're not even really worried about the size of this right now. Let's put uh, uh, charging, okay? Okay, so we'll put charging here. Oh, I just zoomed way up, pardon me. And what we want to do is be able to slide it over so that it hits cleaning. So let's just, we want cleaning to be visible. So I'm just going to kind of do the opposite there. You got charging and cleaning. Now let's bring in some Lottie animation. We'll bring this whole thing together and make it a component. And we'll even use some component states, which if you're not hip to that yet, you're about to get hit to it, hip to it right now. I'm going to open up my plugins and I have the Lottie plugin already installed and open. And I'm going to, let's just look for something really easy. Something like a loading indicator. Okay. You can search right inside of here and it could be something as simple as this. Uh, it's going to show us the animation. We can kind of scrub through it. We could play it and let's just insert it as a Lottie and see if that works. Sometimes there are some Lottie animations that don't quite work and aha, it's right there. It's on our canvas and that has to not to do with XD or the plugin, but it has to do with maybe the actual Lottie animation itself. So you can see now in our layers panel, we have, it's actually turned it into a video right that we can now control with our video control so i'm just gonna whoop, i'm gonna bring this really far down it's pretty massive and i tell you what let's just do this really quick let's press play and see it kind of running right okay so pretty fun pretty cool it just ran once for us we're gonna shrink this down even further and what we're gonna do is bump the word charging over and we'll put this here and we just got to figure out how to line it up. Now we could mask this video and that would help us kind of control the shape of this, but that's fine. We'll, we'll, we don't worry about that right now. Okay. So let's do no playback right now. And we're going to bring the opacity of it down. All right. So now it's just sitting in there kind of docile or dormant for now. Um, and then what we want to do is let's just grab all of this together, all of our shapes, all our Lottie, everything. I'm going to group it together here. Um, that, I think that's going to work nicely and we'll call this our, our switch. I'm just typing that into our layers panel and with our switch selected, uh, I'm just going to hit command K and turn it into a component. Uh, if you're not hip to components, I've just created a master component, um, that I can use over and over and over. Okay. So, um, so if I want to, I can press command shift and Y, and now you can see up here in my component area. I have that component. I can drag it out and use it a million times. This is how we start building design systems. This is how we work smarter and not harder. All right, with that said though, we want our component to have some interactivity, right? Instead of designing all of those micro interactions on separate artboards in XD, we can design them right here inside of the component. And to do that, we just head up to this right-hand panel and we see that we have our component with, it's our main component. 
and it has a default state. Let's create a secondary state and we have some options here. It could be a new state, could be a hover state, and really everything is a new state, but Adobe XD is so smart, so amazing to us designers that it's baked in kind of like built in wired up hover states and toggle states. I'm gonna do toggle, that's what we want. So let's call this one cleaning, okay? We call it on or you can just left it toggle, whatever, that's up to you. With the toggle state selected, I'm gonna grab the things that I want to change. So for instance, I'm gonna move this over here. And uh, before we do this, let's make sure we have it in the right spot. Okay, let's go back to our default state and we wanna make sure that our text and our uh, loading indicator are on top of this. We're gonna name this thing switch. It's always smart to make sure that your initial component is exactly the way you want it all lined up within your layers. Let's replay that last thing we did there and we'll go toggle, that's cool. And now when we select, we have our toggle state selected, we're gonna make our changes, okay? Let's make our text here black and we will slide over like that. And maybe we'll even bump our text over here a little bit. And then we'll bring our animated Lottie animation. We'll select it. And we're now changing the playback to play automatically. And let's loop that thing over and over. All right. Now we should be able to go back to default state, press play. And we should be able to switch between the two. And now we just have some alignment issues, right? Okay, no problem. We can, we can fix that. No problem. So let's just bump this up a little bit like so and we'll fit this inside and we'll bump it over okay i like that a little bit better so the edges of our lottie animation are actually doing us a little bit of a favor like that all right so now let's go back to our default state we'll go on and now we see oh look how beautiful that is it's just running and cleaning and we can switch it off anytime we want and we have some few little changes we have to make. All we have to do is make sure we come in here and turn this text white. And let's not move this text around so much. And when we do that, we should have a nice, a nice little animation there. All right, with that built, why don't we send this vacuum a vacuuming? But before we do that, let's get really interesting, shall we? Um, I'm gonna actually use a little bit of 3D transforms today. So all you have to do is select your object, my image. I'm gonna head over here. I'm gonna hit this little 3D transforms cube in my panel on the right-hand side. And that opens up a new slew of options that I can actually manage over here on the right-hand side in the panel. Or if I wanna be real spicy, I can just use this widget inside and just start doing some 3D transforms transform it back and up if you want it's up to you and i'm thinking that since we're in the living room it would be nice to see the floor plan a little bit wouldn't it so let's bring our floor plan image in here and we got an open door oh let's sorry let's just rotate that around and shrink this down beautiful okay i'm gonna bring it in i like to get my first artboard all set up and just thriving before I do much of anything else. So why don't we do this? We're gonna use some blending options. I'll go multiply, maybe overlay. Now let's go back to multiply and I'll bring the opacity of this down. And we just wanna fit our living room right in there, okay? So now we have a representation of our living room and we have our vacuum kind of 3D stage. We can play with the opacity a little bit and I'm gonna bring this up. I think that's looking exactly the way that I want it to. All right. And I'll bring my vacuum down. So it's more, a little bit more centered on my screen. All right. With that being said, I'm going to duplicate the artboard. I just option drug out another version. You could also command C, command V, depending on your uh, operating system. And we're thinking when we press cleaning here, it's going to shoot over. So now all we have to do is toggle the state. It's going to just run on clean like this, but let's, let's just jump up here and go zero and zero on all of our three-dimensional angles and we will shrink it down this is where our maybe our our vacuum is docked right here love it all right and so right now i'm really wishing that i had a uh i'm really wishing that i had a black vacuum so that it popped a little bit more but that's okay that's okay um and now we have our vacuum there why don't we actually just bring the opacity of our living room up. I'm digging that as well. Uh, so it's going to shrink down and that'll take a certain amount of time. 
And then from there, we will probably add a little bit of a delay and we want our vacuum to move up to the corner there. And then we want a, like a smaller thing, probably take a couple seconds to get from that area to that area, but then only about one second for it to turn and prep and get ready to go to the next one. Now let's, we'll lead our vacuum out to the side. You guessed it, we'll do a similar thing. And then maybe we'll just stop there and maybe we'll add a little bit of some spicy things after that. Let's see if we can prototype and wire this thing up so it works properly and we have some, some things that are working today, all right? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna head over to prototype mode. Uh, an easy way to do that is by just hitting a uh, option two, but I'm just gonna hit it right up there in the top left corner. And I'm gonna grab my, um, my button down here, okay? When I do that, um, we do have a tap trigger, but I'm gonna tap it here and see if that won't work and that's okay. So instead of tapping there, and you know why we can't do that because we already have uh, another, another one. So I'm gonna put an invisible an invisible tap state on this uh, this spot right here. And so all we have to do is take, uh, well, let's go back to design really quick and let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. When you have multiple interactions, multiple prototype triggers and tap and like triggers and stuff like that, sometimes you wanna just draw a tap area. Okay, so here's my tap area. I'm gonna bring the opacity of it down, but it's still there and it's still very much tappable. So we're just gonna call this tap trigger over there in my uh, in my layers panel. And then I like it so much, I'm just gonna make sure that it's in the rest of my artboards and it's always in the same spot in my layer stack. It is on top and it is available, all right? So with that being said, I can now prototype the tap trigger, okay? So I'm gonna tap, it's gonna lead over to our second artboard and we, we wanna we want do this. On tap, auto animate, let's do ease out, but let's actually do, maybe we'll do snap instead. And we want this to happen pretty quick. Let's do something like 0.8 seconds, okay? Now, the cool thing about Adobe XD is it saves your prototype options. So the next time I drag something over, it's gonna try to re-implement those same selections that I made, that 0.8 seconds, all of that. So I like to be a little bit smart about this. Anytime my vacuum is moving locations, I want that to take about five seconds. Anytime it's turning, I want that to be a little faster so we're not sitting around and waiting forever. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the artboard itself so I can do a timed transition. I'm gonna drag over and I'm gonna make this one be five seconds, not snap. We're gonna do none, which is a nice linear, no, no easing involved there. So it doesn't speed up and slow down, it just goes, okay? Nice and crisp. Now when we, we this is our turn, the, our interaction between this one and this one. Let's move to the next piece where we travel from one part of the room to another. And it's gonna remember those options. See those options up there? Five seconds, no easing, auto animate. Fantastic. Now let's do our turn animation. We're gonna go timed here. Oh, excuse me, I did tap, I messed up, right? So we wanna make sure that this is not tap, but time. No delay, everything's cruising. Now we're working, okay? We don't want these to be tap, we want them to be timed. So now let's do the rotation. We will go here, time, no delay, but not five seconds one second and now all we have to do is repeat that one more time on this artboard and let's go back to this tap trigger we should be able to prototype from here and just say hey on tap shut it off and send it back to the start here on tap auto animate to the original robo we'll do it pretty quick and we'll do some snapping to make our way back i'm gonna hit the little house right there to make this the start of my flow which is so amazing because now i can name my flow right i can call this uh, you know, um, power, power on, okay? And that's the name of my flow. When I share this, I'm sharing that flow. When I'm working with these screens, I can just grab that little flow title there and move the entire flow around. This is how we think as UI designers and UX designers in flows, in user flows. Got that little house selected, so now I'm gonna just press play and I'm gonna scroll over to the side. So that's all we see is our, our vacuum right here. So with that being said, I'm just gonna press cleaning. You can see it moves down. Not getting our Lottie animation, but that's okay. We can go back and fix that. Our vacuum is moving up. It's moving over to the right. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some vacuum sound effects? You can just imagine the vacuum sound effects playing. It's going there. And now I'll tell you what, our, our Lottie animation is moving. It's working, but let's turn this off. Beautiful interaction there. Turn it back on and we'll just have to, we just have to take the time and go back in and figure out 
uh, uh, Cornell said, but this is not going to rotate in the right place. No, no, it's rotating. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. And we can just continue adding and we just turn that off like so. So turning it on and turning it right off. And at any time, if we wanted to, we could go back and add that same interaction to our tap point, right? So we can grab and just say, hey, here, one second, auto animate. That way, no matter where our vacuum is at, it's always going to go back to the start, which is what we want. So we could be here and we can turn it off, turn it back on. It starts going and we can interrupt the vacuuming. Oh, whoops, whoops. I don't want it to vacuum. Boom, we put it right back where it needs to go. Isn't that fun? Okay, pretty awesome. We're just using a little bit of little bit of 3D, little bit of auto animate, some timed interactions. And actually one of my favorite things about this is when you turn it off, the bat, the blueprint kind of fades out and fades in. Kind of fun. Okay, cool. That's a simple little interaction for the day. And with that being said, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'm going to jump in now to reviewing some of yesterday's challenges. Um, let's see. Tanya asked a great question. Does each board need to say flow when you click on each board? No, it doesn't need to say that. Um, it's as you duplicate them out in Adobe XD, it's just going to duplicate the name for you. So we just have power on. As I was duplicating boards, it was just duplicating the name, right? So that's all that was happening. That's all that was happening there. This first submission is by Valeris, and yesterday was our space themed. Uh, kind of big hero animation. I'm gonna press play and go full screen on this this thing. Nice, they're kind of paneled out. I like it, kind of switching in and out. We're getting some animation, full video behind here. So you get the galaxy and the stars moving. I don't know if you noticed that's really subtle back here, really cool. And then we're just swapping these to be more center focused. I like that, I like that exploration. Let's go to another one. This one is by uh, Annie, which I believe, who I believe is in our chat today. Let's check out your submission. Beautiful. From one to another. Switching back. That video is popping. You got the video. I had a little struggle with the video. I had a lot of technical difficulties yesterday that you did not have, Annie, but this is amazing. This is rocking. I love the VR and the inclusion of VR. Really, really cool. Isn't that fun though? Just really, really cool. Really fun stuff. All right, let's do another one. This is by Lum Yowen, and this is another one of our homepage explorations here we got the asteroids moving uh, there's a bunch of free stock photography sites out there adobe stock has tons of great stuff that you could have used in here the card has a nice little interaction on it as well smooth let's see that one again it's just something about seeing video that makes you go is this made in a design tool yeah you know it is your boy made it inside of <laughs> inside of adobe xd that micro interaction is very smooth i wish i could see a little uh, like a button like, or some some sort of call to action inside of it, but it's really, really nice. I like it. It's fun to play with video, isn't it? All right, this one is from Miguel Viega, and we're gonna go here and full screen this one. Check it out. I love the kind of clicking on and getting the video to play. Fun, super fun. You didn't wanna, you didn't wanna do any of the movement, and that's fine. It could be this simple, right? Just the, the bigger deal is like the interaction. One thing I would say is I would have loved to have seen Maybe that car take up a little less space. And we are thinking in context of a larger website, we're able to scroll up and down. But I, you know, maybe take this to the next step before you post this to your portfolio and figure out how to get some of those interactions with the card as we click on different elements. Maybe even just fading in, fading out. It doesn't have to be always in your face and big kind of movements for your animations or prototypes. Sometimes they can be subtle, but that just that where's the user supposed to focus would be a good thing to add there. This is looking really nice. A lot of great submissions. This is by Dima Imad. Let's take a look at this submission. Oh, cooking. This is a, a great, awesome idea. Let's just go back really quickly one more time 